Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samuel. With me today, of course, is co-founder of The Gaggle, uh, Peter Lavelle. So, Peter, yesterday, um, United Nations General Assembly um, once again voted on a, a resolution condemning Russia, demanding that Russia leave um, uh, Ukraine, you know, lock, stock and barrel. However, the... Um, the needle didn't move very far. You know, they had exactly the same vote a year ago, um, and uh, in favor of the resolution was 141. In favor of the resolution this time, again, 141. Against last year, five. This year, again, seven. There were fewer little slightly fewer abstentions, but basically exactly the same vote. So uh, the Western powers uh, failed to uh, gain uh, any additional uh, votes. So and, oh, and, and, and yeah. plus the, the resolution, you know, I, I think it's it's been glossed over intentionally by Western. Well, we're going to talk about that. I, I've, okay, got, right. I've got some Sorry, slides okay. about, from that resolution. So, um, and then I, I, two days before, uh, there was a debate at the uh, before the UN Security Council initiated by Russia on um, the uh, sabotage of the uh, Nord Stream pipelines, uh, and Russia called for. Um, an international uh, investigation. And um, what was interesting about that uh, discussion was that suddenly all of the hot air and the fireworks and the moral invective that we usually hear from the Western powers was gone. Instead, we had the calm, measured tones. We don't want to engage in conspiracy theories. We don't want to start spreading disinformation. We need a calm, measured deliberate process of investigating uh, of what really happened. And it's being thoroughly investigated, even as we speak, by the very, very, very competent authorities of Germany, Sweden, and Denmark. So let's not upset the apple cart. So very, very different contrast. So anyway, anyway let's take a look first at the, um, uh, the Security Council uh, resolution. And um, here, um the uh um oh, so it, you know has the underscores the need to reach as soon as possible comprehensive just and lasting peace and then uh welcomes expresses strong the efforts of the secretary general which is you know usual uh boilerplate and then uh, calls upon member states uh to redouble support for diplomatic efforts um and then it says it reaffirms its commitment to the sovereignty, independence, unity, and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its international recognized borders, reiterates its demand that the Russian Federation immediately, completely, and unconditionally withdraw all of its military forces from the territory of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders uh, and calls for a cessation of hostilities. So, so what, what were you going to say, Peter? Well, what what I'm saying is, is that you know there it, 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 there should be a parallel here. Okay, the vote was essentially the same. How many more countries have sanctioned Russia? None. Right. Okay. No, right. No, I think, and, and I, I, think right. I think it's really I, interesting right. to parallel well, I, those. I, no, I I agree. However, what the interesting thing here is that um, this is a quite extreme resolution, and that's why I think it's um. I find, you know, obviously we know how the NATO and the EU powers are going to vote. We know how all the countries uh, that are aligned with NATO and the EU are going to vote. Um, I do find it a little troubling that the countries that are not aligned with NATO and the EU voted for this because, um, you know, there's plenty here to say, let's say you're not happy with uh, what Russia did. Let's say, you know, let's say you say, OK, well, I, I'm, I'm against what they did last year. However, you might still say, I don't see that they should withdraw to its internationally recognized borders. I think saying that they should withdraw from Crimea is a, is, is a ridiculous uh, demand. And that's why I thought that it, here's the, the, the way the vote went. And, um, you know, we, we, we have the, um, uh, you know, the abstentions pretty much the same as uh, last time. Um, China, India, Pakistan, all abstained. Um, you know, you know, Tajikistan, uh, uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, 
um, so the members of the CSTO. You know, again, I, you know, maybe we disagree here. I, I do think that members of the Collective Security Treaty Organization, which is a sort of a NATO with, uh, uh, involving Russia and these countries, you know, they should do what the NATO powers do. The NATO powers always march in lockstep. Um, and, yep. But of the CSTO, yep. only um, uh, Belarus uh, voted against. Yeah, well, they like this organism. Uh... Uh, um, of this security organization, they only like it when Russia helps them. Other than that, they're they, right. they're very. I mean, Kazakhstan. I mean, really, give me a break, okay? Right. Uh, there would have been there would have been forced regime change there if Russia hadn't acted very exactly. efficiently and quickly and left and left. Okay, yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, but George, um, we have to reiterate to everyone here: this is non-binding. Oh okay? yeah, yeah. No, I I, I agree. No, I, I agree. But I. I, 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 yeah. I, I I, I I don't think that you know this was taken very seriously. I think it's very boilerplate. Um, it's interesting that in the resolution itself, it doesn't really talk about what are Ukraine's borders. Okay. Right. Well, uh, but that's, that's right. Kind of well, it says too. internationally recognized. Now, internationally recognized borders would still be Crimea is internationally recognized as part of um, Ukraine. Now, that's a non-starter. I mean, it's pretty much you know even. Blinken allegedly uh, said to some reporters that that's a red line for Russia. Um, so, so basically, these countries have now signed on to hey, Russia needs to withdraw from uh, from Crimea. I mean, okay, as you say, it's boilerplate, but nonetheless, I think it's troubling that um, Brazil, which is a member of the BRICS. Um, should have voted for this resolution. I mean, again, you know, you know, some of our friends hailed this wonderful great man Lula. I never did, um, but you know, I, not, not, not sure, you know, what what a great leader um, Lula really is. Um, and uh, and again, Argentina, which is aspiring as an aspiring BRICS member, you know, hey, that's not really. Not the right, not, not the best way to go about it. Serbia again voted uh, for it. I, I, George, I, I agree with you. I, th I find it very disappointing because um, the the breastfeeding in the global south that we have heard over the last year, which you know I, I'm very glad uh, it, it's asserting themselves, um, um, uh, separating themselves from their clo former colonial masters and all that. But when the when the rubber hits the road, uh, it's not always you know, the rhetoric doesn't match the action. Right. However, the, the way I look at it, just as I mentioned earlier, I, it's what countries are actively involved in sanctioning right. Russia. That's a totally different question. OK, no, I, I mean, I, 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 if there was a vote on that, I think we'd have a very, very, very different uh, board in front of us right now. But right. I, I absolutely agree with you. And uh, it, to give you a sense on the ground where I am here in Moscow, is it the Russians feel like we're on our own? We're on our own, and we we really can't count on a whole lot of people. We could maybe in some cases a pat on the back and a good word, but at the end of the day, just like um, during the Second World War, you're on your own. Okay, you're you got to do it yourself. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that, the, exactly. And and it is you know okay, it's it's fine they abstain, but you kind of want I think a little bit more, particularly as we mentioned, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan. Armenia are all members of the CSTO, and therefore, as we said, Kazakhstan, um, uh, you know, it's only, it's, it, he only survived thanks to uh, Russia's immediate military intervention. And Armenia, you know, he's got a, he's got a real problem on his hands with Azerbaijan. And, uh, and you know, <laughs> it just, again, abstains. So, you know, um, I'm so surprised. And, and George, all yeah. these countries, with the exception of Kazakhstan, they are economically viable because of remittances from Russia. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I noticed uh, Venezuela, which actually spoke quite strongly against the resolution. I mean, it looks like they didn't vote, which I don't know what that means. I mean, it's like what you were in the toilet when when the, the roll call went. I mean, I, 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 I have to hope that, George. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe they got the day wrong. Uh, you know, didn't get the memo. I don't know. Okay, I don't know, just, just it's very, very strange that you know they they, they just didn't show up to vote. I mean, it's, it's like I don't know. But anyway, um, so here we have um, um, the Belarus um, uh, representative. You know, and I'm quoting him because there was you know no no point in going through uh, too many speeches. But he, he because Belarus presented amendments 
to the resolution with the purpose of rectifying certain inaccuracies, outlining the goal to take the resolution out of the gray area of half truths. He said that the preambular paragraph five describes the actions of the Russian Federation as a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, which is not in line with the reality, which obviously it isn't. If the Russian Federation had not limited itself to conducting special military operations and conducted a fully fledged invasion using its full military potential, he said, there would be no country able to exist after a couple of hours or minutes after that. Uh, noting that uh, President Alexander Lukashenko has repeatedly said that the only way of ending the conflict is to start negotiations. He recalled that the former heads of state and government of the Normandy Four have publicly acknowledged the lack of interest in peace at the time of working of the Minsk II agreement package. Um, these, so these that's, that's kind of an many, understatement. Exactly. You know? <laughs> Very much an understatement. Yeah, well, I guess they're diplomats. Um, but, um, but it's uh, interesting, these amendments were voted down, and yet, you know, they're perfectly reasonable uh, amendments because there are, basically there are no calls for serious negotiations. Uh, so um, they, uh, for, it's right. And then he says, spotlighting the objective of the Second Amendment to include elements of a peaceful settlement, he pointed out that it is either a tragic oversight or an intentional step that the draft resolution does not contain an appeal to peace negotiation. Boy. Due to the efforts of Lukashenko, several rounds of negotiations have been organized between Kiev and Moscow, noting that breaking the talks and pumping Ukraine with weapons resulted in protracting the confrontation. He also expressed concern about statements of some politicians to provide Ukraine with lethal weaponry, including weapons of mass destruction. Underscoring that, the amendments have no hidden agenda and aim to end the conflict using peaceful means. He pointed out the voting would be considered as a test of being truly interested in attaining lasting peace in Ukraine. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> I guess um, many countries are not interested in uh, a lasting peace in uh, Ukraine. But these are reasonable amendments, but they were voted down. Um, so, and um, this is, um, uh, uh, yeah, this, this is, um, uh, what's his name, Nibenzia, the uh, Russia's permanent representative, uh, questioning the possibility of trusting the West when it says it wants peace. He said that a year into the conflict, very few doubt that the collective West, not Ukraine, is fighting the Russian Federation, seeking a strategic defeat. Ukraine is nothing more than a pawn. And while Moscow is ready for a diplomatic solution, its opponents have not recovered from the futile illusion that they could defeat a nuclear power. On ways to move towards peaceful resolution of the differences between the Russian Federation and the West, he said that one thing is for certain, the resolution to be voted on today will not help at all. Rather, member states should support the balancing amendments introduced by Belarus. He added that if these are rejected and the document remains one-sided and divorced from reality, then all present should vote against the text. It's very interesting that, you know, you know, we've had these comments by Medvedev and so on, you're saying, hey, you cannot defeat a nuclear power. I mean, the implications is there, you know, that, you know, we're not going to lose. We are a nuclear power and therefore, you know, <laughs> you know, we, 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 we are ready to use all weapons at our disposal. And they, they say this, and yet this point doesn't seem to sink in. Uh, among Russia's Western interlocutors, you know, they just oh, oh you're just, just just bluffing. I mean, why why would you think that they're bluffing? <laughs> they say, well, you cannot defeat a nuclear power. I mean, that it, it is it is an impossibility. But this is what makes it so tragic, George. Is that I can answer your question. People like Jake Sullivan, Anthony Blinken, Victoria Newland, they are blinded by ideology. They're not blind. They're they they're, they're completely detached from from uh, the real realities on the ground. Of course. I mean, if you're going to start striking Russia, Russia will use everything in its power to strike back, no matter where it comes from. OK, all bets are off. OK, right. but no, because they believe in their in the righteousness of their cause. They understand the arc of history, all of this other nonsense. It blinds them to yes, to this very real threat. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um and um, and then I want to show you something. This is Josep Borrell, <laughs> and it's very it's very baffling that um, Josep Borrell, who is not a member state of the United Nations and he does not represent a member state of the United Nations, 
got to speak at the General Assembly. Um, because Josef Borrell is a little like um, Zelensky. Uh, and I guess, you know, Stoltenberg as well. You know, they they, they pop up everywhere. You know, you just can't... can't Von der Leyen, you know. Yeah, Von der Leyen, you know, one. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you break these protocols, you don't might not have a chair to sit on, okay? <laughs> but, 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 Gagglers will understand the reference, okay? <laughs> but it, what's interesting here is that um, he says uh, that... Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. He's, he stressed that the people of Ukraine deserve peace, but not just any peace, rather one grounded on the principles of the United Nations Charter. <clears throat> and then he goes on, <clears throat> underscoring that this is neither a European issue nor a West versus Russia issue. He said the illegal war concerns everyone. Sovereignty and territorial integrity are the principles that the Russian Federation is attacking in Ukraine every day. If the international community does not condemn such actions, it increases the risk for any other country elsewhere in the world to face similar aggression. Because, of course, it never happens. No one ever attacks any other country. Just simply, it just doesn't happen. I mean, it's like, you know, everyone is safe within their and, own and, and if you if you want confirmation of what George just said, they're just walk the streets of Belgrade and ask yes. it, has it ever happened before? Never happened, never happened. And, and you know, Iraq, you know, Perfectly integrated. No one, no one has ever attacked Iraq. Um, Israel never, never attacks any country. I mean, never, it never bombs Syria. It never bombs Lebanon. It, it, it never bombs Gaza. It just doesn't do it. It's because it respects the United Nations Charter. Um, and so, Ukraine has the right to defend itself and to protect its population against daily shelling from the Russian Federation's army. And this says the European Union has always been a peace project. That's cue, cue for laughter, exactly. Yes, that, that's a good one. <laughs> I like I like a joke at this time of the day. <laughs> uh, adding that bringing peace to the European continent and promoting it around the world is central to the bloc's origin and DNA. You know that you know. Whenever I think of the European Union, I'm automatically thinking that they're, all the time they're trying to bring peace all over the world. That it, it's at, at its DNA. It's the core DNA of the European Union. It's sending so Burrell, arms to your brain. Yeah. Burrell is now a botanist or a biologist. Okay. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's funny. It's, it's just like, yeah, we're sending arms, you know, everything to Ukraine, uh, but it's part of our peace project. I think, you know, the, the mentality that gets you to say this. Well, is, but know, he's, he's, he, he conf in Munich uh, to, at, secure, at the security conference, he confronted the uh, uh, Chinese foreign minister. He said, you know, you, you not, do not send weapons to you, uh, <laughs> China, do not send weapons to Russia. And then the foreign minister said, well, you're sending the weapons to Ukraine. What's the difference? Oh, it's a very big difference. And he ran <laughs> for the door. <laughs> it's a very big difference. Big difference. I'll get back to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went on. This is where it gets funny. Um, is, it, is, it, is this where we are? Um, okay. Yeah. Then, then he said, stressing that the Russian Federation must end all hostilities, withdraw, blah, blah. He added that the European Union will continue to give Ukraine the support it needs to defend its population, as well as provide humanitarian and financial assistance. Because, of course, you know, Send, sending, you know, tanks, you know, fighter jets, it's all about uh, uh, defending its population. Further, the bloc will work to hold the Russian Federation accountable for its actions and war crimes, um, expressing support for President Zelensky's peace formula. He said the European Union has worked in close cooperation with Ukraine and partners throughout the whole preparatory process for today's draft resolution, and then amendments and comments made in good faith were duly considered to the extent possible, adding that it is manipulative of Belarus to put forward amendments during today's debate. Um, and uh, he, he Who's being manipulative? <laughs> right. But it's very interesting because, uh, and, and the reason it's interesting is that now, um, what Borrell was speaking on the behalf of the European Union, that he supports the Zelensky plan. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you, this is the Zelensky plan. I have a lot of, lot of crap here, yeah, yeah. but just um, uh, here he says, um, um, the plan is restoring Ukraine's territorial integrity and Russia reaffirming it according to the UN Charter. He says, Zelensky said it's not up for negotiations. Withdrawal of Russian troops, cessation of hostilities, restoration of Ukraine's state borders with Russia, and then justice, including the establishment of a special tribunal 
to prosecute Russian war crimes. So special tribunals exclusively, not even we let's set up a tribunal for all war crimes, just specifically Russian war crimes. So this, well, they, this they, is, have a, they have a template. They did that to the Serbs. Yes, exactly. That that's the whole point. Um, uh, but at least you know, in, in the case of the Serbs, they they pretended that this was going to be uh, all sides were going to be uh, you know before the tribunal. Of course, they weren't. But at least they made the pretense that oh, this is not a victor's justice. This is this is every, you know everyone's equal uh, before the law. And today, the EU came out with the statement: we support President Zelensky's peace formula. Together with our international partners, we will make sure that Ukraine prevails. International law is respected. Peace and Ukraine's territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders are restored. Ukraine will be rebuilt and the justice is done. Until that day, we will not rest. You, you have to say, though, that the EU now is just truly cretinous. I mean, this is just cretinism. Um, you're, you're now embracing Zelensky's formula, which can not in, in any way be uh, any basis for anything. Um, and you, you're going to set up this tribunal um good luck with that how you, you're going to go to moscow and start arresting uh russian and, and and of course they also say yeah we're going to get all this money this 300 billion that we 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 stole from russia hand it all over to uh ukraine until that day we will not rest you know this is this is i i you know as i say it's just cretinism i mean this, you know, this isn't even dumb i mean it's just cretinism yeah, well, Burrell, he, he's going to sm get himself smuggled into Russia, go to the Kremlin and say, I am making a citizen's arrest. A citizen's arrest. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, George, when you were reading this, it kind of reminded me, let, let's say, you know, Europe is a, a, a big house, okay? And at the beginning, uh, exactly one year ago today, um, the, the, the porch got on fire. And then a few months later, the back porch got on fire. And then your first bedroom goes up into smoke. And right. then, no, no, we, we're resolved that, we, you know, that we're going to continue down this path. I mean, right. it, it, the whole thing is caving in on them. Right. And uh, until that day, we will not rest. I mean, right. this is going into the realm of, of the absurd. OK, right. Right. OK. And. And for everyone, you know, I don't want to sound like such a maximalist. I'm I'm trying to be a pragmatist here. Um, these are not, they don't want negotiations. They want Russia to surrender. That's right. what they want. Right. Okay. Right. And, and, and they until that take day. Apart its sovereignty. They right. want to put uh, its leadership on trial. Right. Um, I mean, what, what 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 is the negotiations here? Okay. Right. There isn't it. You know, we, we, you know we, this is total victory. So then you have to ask, well, all right, um, and how are you going to accomplish this? Oh, we're going to send all these weapons. Well, that's not going to accomplish total victory. I mean, are you ready to go? You know, you're going to have to go in directly yourselves to achieve this total victory because <laughs> Ukraine isn't going to be able to do it. You know, you can send them whatever you want. I mean, they're not going to be able to achieve total victory. Um, yep. Yep. So they have no I idea. Could, what I could say to Burrell that you will not rest because as George just said, for any chance, I mean, minute chance for some kind of Ukrainian victory, NATO is going to have to go all in, yeah. all in, right. okay? Go to war, right. okay? Right. Start, start sending your troops, okay? And you still don't have a chance, okay? You will be annihilated. You will be eviscerated. This right. man is out of his mind. Borrell is yeah, Borrell is out of his mind. You know, it's uh, but 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 you know, he's speaking on behalf of the EU. The EU issued this statement today. So essentially, we are embracing Zelensky's formula. This 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 figure, um, who's this? I don't know. I think Steve Bannon called him this poisonous dwarf. Uh, and I think um, <laughs> uh, and, and Tucker Tucker Carlson referred to him as a kind of a, a deeply dark figure. Um, well, did you, in, on Tucker Carlson's program, I don't know if you read the comments, uh, the pimp in Kiev. Oh, oh, oh he, Tucker Carlson said- yeah, I, was, I was surprised by that. Oh, I, I missed that. He said pimp in he called Kiev. Called him, uh, he, he didn't, ver he didn't um, verbalize it, but it was in the comment, you know, the, okay. the bar there, you know, okay. pimp. So, yeah, now you're embracing this lunatic, lunatic I I ideas. That That's now the EU's uh, diplomatic position. I mean, it, it's it's mind boggling. Um, but George, hang on. It's, yeah. Isn't it really interesting? And it's something um, smart people 
pointed out as NATO was expanding eastward towards Russia, that the given the number of nations being in, uh, countries being inducted, the balance was going to start shifting to the east. Right. Okay, right. and now and now the, the cherry on the top, everyone, a country that is not in NATO, a country that is not in the EU, is dictating EU policy. Right. Get your head around that. I know it's 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 insane. I mean, I I didn't post the entirety of the EU statement, but he just said just exactly what you said, which is Ukraine is a member of the family of European nations. So well, that justifies us going all in, you know, un until that day we will not rest. So you kind of did this kind of verbal trick of saying Ukraine is a member of the European family. Um, and uh, and therefore everything we do is justified when you know people say, hey, it's not a member of the EU, it's not a member of NATO. So what exactly are you doing, uh, going all in for for Ukraine? But they get around it by saying, oh, it's a member of the European family. Well, then why isn't Russia a member of the European family? I mean, you're saying Russia. I mean, I guess they are saying Russia is not a member of the European family. But if you're going to use that kind of loose language then why does Ukraine get to be a member of the European family, not Russia, not Belarus? Well, Borrell should resign his position and he should um, suggest that Zelensky take over the uh, position of uh, dealing with uh, the EU's external affairs because he's right. just done that. Okay. Right. I mean, if that's the, if it's someone else's plan, let him run it. Let him, let, like, you know, go, you know, you know, hit the ground, get right. running. Okay. Right. He's right. made himself completely. Why are you writing this? Why don't you just say the EU supports Zelensky's plan? Full stop. That's it. Okay. Go check it. Check out the plan. There's nothing else more to say. <laughs> so here um, there was a, a, a report, newspaper report about the, a clash between Annalena Baerbock and China. It says, in a debate at the UN General Assembly marking the anniversary of the invasion and seen as a key barometer of the state of world opinion, China intervened to present itself as above the conflict by proposing a catalog of measures. We'll discuss that in, in, in uh, another video. Uh, and then it says, the deputy Chinese envoy to the UN, Dai Bing, insisted the West was worsening the situation by arming Ukraine, saying, adding fuel to the fire will only exacerbate tensions. And then his remarks provoked Baerbock into a powerful rebuttal, Ooh, powerful, um, <laughs> rejecting his claim that the West was indulging in military spending at the expense of other priorities more important to ordinary people. She asked, why on earth will we do that? Adding, we do not want this war. We did not choose this war. She said the government would much rather focus on every bit of our energy and money in fixing our schools, in fighting the climate crisis, and strengthening social justice. And the truth is, Russia, if Russia stops fighting, the war ends. If Ukraine stops this fighting, Ukraine ends. This is just parroting what Stoltenberg uh, uh, said. Um, what, <laughs> well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm sorry, George, but I mean, then I would ask her, then why don't you just do that? Why don't you work on the uh, on energy and schools and climate? I mean, you're yes. making a craven choice. No one is forcing you to do this. Right. You're choosing to do no. this. You choose, exactly. Because, the, the, you know, she's not answering the point made by the, uh, the, the, the Chinese uh, delegate, because um, you got involved. Nobody attacked, you know, if somebody had attacked Germany, then you can say, yeah, we would much rather do these things. But somebody attacked us. We have to address this. You chose to get involved, and in get involved in such an aggressive, violent war-making uh, way. And as we discussed in the past, it, breaking all your pledges that you made at the time of the unification, breaking the pledges of your constitution. <laughs> but but you chose to do this. Um, you know, you decided that you would do. It. And again, you're supposed to be this climate crisis environmentalist. How, you know, and sending tanks, fighter planes, that's not doing any damage to the environment. I don't, you know, the well, did, did, didn't, didn't Baerbach send a, a, um, a, an immediate communique to the United Nations that the pipelines had been destroyed and that all of that gas, tons and tons of gas went into the into the air? She did do that, didn't she? Yes, George, that, yeah, that, that's right. Exactly. That, 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 that's right. So, um, so there, there it is. You know, they, you know, Germany chose to get involved in this war. 
I mean, and this thing about, well, we would much rather, uh, you know, do all of these things, you know, oh, and fixing our schools, kindergartens, all these wonderful things, you know, <laughs> like, okay, why don't you do that? It kind of reminds me of, um, uh, was that um, John Stewart, you know, who was, you know, uh, where he said, you know, well, well, the only reason I'm always in, involved in politics is um, uh, because there's so many terrible things going on. That's why I'm doing it. I, I'm a comedian. I would much rather just go ahead and do fart jokes all the time. Um, but it, I'm being forced to do this. So, you know, it's, it's as phony as that. You know, I'd much rather just do fart jokes. I, I want to deal with schools and kindergartens. Uh, instead, I'm having to be a wartime leader. Well, we did not want this war. We did not choose this war. Well, everything your your great benefactor, Angela Merkel, did when it vis a vis Ukraine created the conditions for this conflict. Okay. Your great benefactor lied. Okay. Reflect upon that. Reflect upon how that influenced German policy, how that influenced European policy, European Union policy, and particularly NATO policy. Right. So it was chosen for you, Annalino, probably when you were still 12. <laughs> that's right. Um, so, so that's, you know, yes, climate crisis, the way to address the climate crisis is by sending uh, tanks uh, to Ukraine. I mean, that, oh, it's, that's guaranteed to um, help. Well, uh, but you, everybody should know that the military, I don't care what military it is, unless they, 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 they have electric tanks now, which I've never heard of. <laughs> Every military, and particularly in the United States, the Pentagon is the worst polluter right. in the world. Right, right. In the world. Okay. Right. And yeah. we've got about I don't even know. <laughs> and then she said, she said, suffering, including abduction, rape, torture, would continue every day, and that the world's gaping wounds caused by hunger, inflation, and energy sources would not end. Every country, she argued, had a duty to send a clear signal that the war was coming to an end, addressing the 30 to 40 countries likely to abstain from the resolution, including China, India, and South Africa. She noted, today, each of us has to make a decision to stand in isolation with the oppressor or stand together for peace. So um, leave aside the, 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 the echoes of George W. Bush, you know, those who are not with us are against us or whatever, whatever it was they said, or those, are, those who are not with us are on the side of the terrorists. Um, I, you know, how are you standing for peace? I mean, this is, this is where you get this, you're insulting people's intelligence. You are not standing for peace. I mean, you go, we, we stand for peace. Well, you stand for what? What negotiations are you calling for? What? What? How are you bringing about peace by sending more arms, which cannot bring about peace? I am for peace. George is for peace. So break up NATO, and this won't happen again. It's done. It's yes. pretty simple. Very simple. That, that absolutely. Right. That, yeah. Another thing before I say it, forget it, George. Is that Annalena Baerbach seems to have a lot in common with Joe Biden, because both of them, for reasons that are unexplained. They're all in on this. See, this is what they think they can make their, this is the Biden administration, remember, for victory over Russia in Ukraine. Right. That's what the narrative they want. Better about, okay. she wants to be head of the European Union, queen of the universe. I don't know, okay? But right. the, the, they're all in on something. And I can I can understand the calculus that people, you know, you know, they get on a policy, they think that's the train that's going to take me to the station. Right. This is the worst possible policy that you right. could put everything into. Okay, right. I mean, I mean, it, some at least people at the uh, um, responsible statecraft they'll do this condemnation of Russia in the last three lines, but we shouldn't destroy them. You know, they always leave themselves a little wiggle room to get out. These right. two, no. Um, no, Biden no. and Benabov, there's no ambiguity no, here. No. When it goes down, they're going with it. That's right, and I think that. Um... What what binds the two together, Biden and Baerbach, is that they see the world in this ridiculous Manichaean way, uh, absolute good versus absolute evil. That's always a bad way to look at things. You know, you always end in disaster. You know, because with absolute evil, there is no uh, well, negotiation I mean, okay. to be had. You know, you can only go for victory, and and that's you know, that, that's and that's the problem with these two. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's the United States against Grenada, you, you can have your Manichaean world, okay? Because the outcome is known in advance. In this set, uh, situation, it is not, and it's far, far more dangerous, okay? So, you know, you can be Manichaean when you have absolute overwhelming right. power. 
Okay? Right. That's right. But you, this is not the case here. And that's why these two are gambling everything. And there's so much pride involved in right. this with both of right. these two. Right. No, I, I, that, that's right. And I think that because their view of the world, I mean, the way they've defined the issues is entirely moralistic. I mean, it's like they haven't in any way tried to address you know, the, the issues involved in this war, you know, because that would involve, you know, how do we resolve this? How do we negotiate? You know, what could be a compromise solution? Uh, they've made this into this moral uh, fight, moral struggle for the future of the world. Well, when you, when you take such an absolutist position, then, you know, there that, that can only be war. I mean, it can, you, know, you have to then fight it to the bitter end. That's why these people are an absolute... Uh, catastrophe. I mean, I, I think Biden's um, uh, the the twenty twenty election was was a catastrophe. I mean, the worst possible person. It was obvious Biden was the worst possible president. We we know about his history. You know, you know, he, he, his absolutism on all these issues on whether it was Iraq and of course more important than Yugoslavia. We know about this, and we knew that once he was president, you know, America was heading towards a uh, catastrophe. Well, and if you take an absolutist position. You're going to have to, uh, taking an absolute position avoids talking about how the hell did we get here? Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. What that does is it obliterates any sense of causality yeah. and, 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 and it obliterates any kind of responsibility. Right. Okay. George and I, for better or worse, and I hope our, the gagglers like it, we've devoted the last year talking about context. Okay. Right. How right. we got here. Neither right. one of us wanted this to happen. Right. And I certainly did. Right. But George and I predicted that it was an absolute certainty, considering how things were going. That's right. That's right. And then um, the, this is still from this Guardian report about the debate. The debate was dominated by European voices, with few of the African nations planning to abstain, coming forward to explain their thinking. And then it says the French foreign minister, Catherine Colonna, appealed directly to the likely abstainers saying the war was everyone's business and stressing neutrality can amount to complicity with the aggressor. She said our common duty was to stop, uh, was to stop excessive violence, adding none of, none of would be able to, steep, able to sleep easy in a world when a great power can, at its own discretion, attack its neighbors. So again, uh -huh. moralism. I mean, and that in itself is, you know, something, you know, we'll, we'll discuss at some point how the Europeans have now embraced uh, this American kind of moral absolutism where before they, they used to have a pragmatic view of the world, how do we try and resolve a problem rather than go in for this uh, moralistic posturing. But now you, the Europeans are, are even worse than the Americans in this you know, empty, stupid uh, moralism. Yeah, but I mean, they but see what they've done is they've painted themselves into a corner. They're in a cul-de-sac. That's the only the only th argument they have left is this moralism. I'm sorry, George. You know, from a French foreign minister talking about excessive violence, and I yeah. mean, you know, from a uh, from a former great colonial power, this really you know is really hollow. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm. I, I agree. Um, so, um, so now, this, you know, as I said, we had the UN General Assembly, and then on Tuesday, we had a very different type of debate before the UN Security Council. Um, Russia had called this meeting to call for an international investigation into the um, uh, destruction of the Nord Stream uh, pipeline. So that was back in, uh, it took place in September. And here, you know, that whole you know, you're either with us or you're against us, you know, none, none of that was here. So um, he, here, the first person to speak is this Rosemary Di Carlo, um, yeah. who's a UN um, uh, bureaucrat. And she said, citing new reports alleging acts of sabotage, she reiterated that the United Nations is not in a position to verify or confirm any of the claims relating to those incidents and is awaiting the findings of ongoing national investigations. Given the sensitivity and speculation regarding this issue, we urge all concerned to show restraint and avoid any speculation. We should avoid any unfounded accusations that could further escalate the already heightened tensions in the region and potentially inhibit the search for the truth. Now, um, you know, I, I saw that. I watched that on video. I mean, I, 
considering all of the bluster that we've heard over the last few months coming out of the United Nations. And then, but no, we must be calm. We must be sober. It, it's right. really a huge contest. Right. Con, uh, con yeah, exactly. So, um, and then we had Jeffrey Sachs. Um, oh, that he say he, he said um, you know called it an act of international terrorism, which of course it was. Um, and he said it is the council's responsibility to take up a question of who might have carried out the act, uh, help bring the perpetrator to justice, pursue compensation for damaged parties, and prevent such actions from recurring in the future. Um, and then uh, noting the vast economic losses related to the pipeline itself and the heightened threat to uh, transboundary infrastructure, he pointed out that the global transformation to green energy will require considerable infrastructure of that sort. Countries need full confidence that their infrastructure will not be destroyed by third parties. Um, and then he okay. says that... Uh, yeah, the, the destruction of the Nord Stream pipelines required a very high degree of planning, expertise, technological capacity. Uh, only a handful of state level actors uh, have both the technical capacity and access to the Baltic Sea to have carried out this action. And then mentions this includes Russia, the U US, UK, Poland, Norway, Germany, Denmark, and Sweden. And then Ukraine lacks the necessary technologies as well as access to the Baltic Sea, which itself is very interesting because your friend Fiona Hill gave an interview uh, the other day. And uh, and she said, well, you know, initially I thought that Russia had uh, carried out this attack on Nord Stream. Now I'm not so sure. I certainly don't think the United States did this. Um, I think Ukraine may have done this. <laughs> this, this quote, <laughs> expert, unquote, you know, obviously, hey, I don't want to say United States that Ukraine. How the hell could Ukraine do anything like this? But you know, you know, let's let's just push Ukraine under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, he went on to note, and this is this is uh, Sachs um, uh, that um, that you know countries have privately concluded no evidence that Russia carried out the act. Uh, Denmark, Germany, and Sweden have reportedly carried out investigations. And while Sweden has perhaps the most to tell the world about the crime scene, that country has kept the results of its investigation secret from the rest of the world. Well, they don't want to know the world. They don't want the world to know that Russia did it. Okay, they they hate the idea of accusing Russia. You know, they just they just hate it. You know that that it's just very very embarrassing. It has refused to share its findings with the Russian Federation and turned down a joint investigation with Denmark and Germany. Um, the council must require those countries to immediately turn over the results of their investigation. Uh, that's right. I mean, that, the, the thing is that they're trying to protect Russia. That, that's what it's all about, they, you know, because it'll be too embarrassing for Russia. They just they need to. Uh, you know, I, I, just because I don't want to forget about it, but Jeffrey Sachs put on a really good presentation. I really enjoyed it. And I'm not I have not always been a big fan of the guy because of shock therapy. OK, I. And, and that whole mantra at the end of the Soviet Union and, and, and actually in the former Eastern uh, Bloc of Europe. But um, right. uh, he's, he's, he's come out um, yeah. um, unfazed, yeah, uh, really changed, impressed. Changed, yeah, that's right. He's changed, changed his views very much. Um, uh, and, then, uh, and, and then he went on, which was quite interesting. He says here, um, the Biden administration has described Hirsch's account as, quote, completely and utterly false but did not offer any information contradicting Hirsch's account and or any alternative explanation, which itself is very interesting because, uh, and, and that they, the Americans just simply denied, no, no, absolute rubbish, totally false. Okay, um, what's your uh, take then? I mean, you know, you have all these satellites, you know, you have the best intelligence gathering technology in the world, do you have any theory of your own as to who did it? Um, you're saying what Hirsch said is absolutely false, which of course it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, what everything is false? You know, you know, is there some part of it that isn't false? I mean, by not getting into any specifics, you, basically you're off the hook. Yeah, um, and so who did it? <laughs> I mean, if you didn't do it, who did? <laughs> <laughs> who did it? Yeah, um, and then the United Kingdom. Uh, says, uh, condemn the acts of sabotage targeting the Nord Stream pipeline. However, it is not clear to this delegation 
why after five months the Russian Federation is suddenly pursuing this issue with such urgency? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, because it's it's their property and they're a kind of an injured party. Um, and Seymour Hirsch came out with an article about it. Okay? Exactly, a few days ago. All right, that's right. He welcomed a joint letter from Denmark, Sweden, and Germany informing the United Nations member states that investigations are ongoing and voiced full support for those technical investigations led by competent, very, very competent. Uh, it has to be competent. Uh, they, they, it has to be competent. Um, if, if it's not competent, then, you know, it's no good. Well, I mean, competent. whoever blew it up was competent, okay? <laughs> Keep going, George. The only recent development regarding the Nord Stream of which his delegation is aware is a new round of lurid accusations by the Russian Federation controlled media. So how does... Well, well, yeah. Is there a foot? Is there a footnote there, George? Is there a footnote there? <laughs> no, there's never any footnote. Um, and and again, what has Hirsch got to do with the Russian Federation-controlled media? And then he says the basis for those accusations is an article by an American journalist, an American journalist, which cites only a single secret source and which has been comprehensively debunked by others online. Now, uh, this is all completely false, because first of all, Hirsch's style of writing, he writes in the way the source. That doesn't mean he used only one source. He, he just does it in order to protect his sources. Otherwise, he might give away, you know, if he says, oh, a source in this department, a source in that department said this, then that might give clues as to who it is. So he says the source doesn't mean that he only used one source. That is a stupid thing, that the talking point that people repeat it. But then I love always this debunk. Who debunked it? I mean, yeah, can you give us a citation as to who it is who debunked it? Um, and uh, yeah, it hasn't let, let been me check. Let me check, George. Maybe there is a footnote here. Maybe you missed it. Here. Nope. 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 Okay, I'll keep looking. I'll keep, keep looking. looking. Yeah. Uh, and it says the likely real reason for the Russian Federation's urgency today is a desperate desire to shift attention away from the massive casualties suffered by the Russian Federation's military and from the devastation it has wrought on the people of uh, Ukraine. Yeah, so basically, you're not, you're not really um, addressing any, any of the issues. Well, I mean, certainly, George, there's no urgency on his part. No okay. urgency, none. <laughs> right. And then um, John Kelly of the United States said, today's meeting is a blatant attempt by Russia to distract, blah, blah. And then says, this is not the first time Moscow has used its, its seat on the council to amplify conspiracy theories from the internet. Well, you know, um, you, you have no, you, you're a nobody. You have no basis to start uh, accusing Seymour Hirsch, who's basically been a kind of a credit to American journalists for I don't know how many decades. I mean, American journalists have been dining out on Hirsch for decades. I mean, it's like, you know, who else has broken as many important stories uh, in American journalism as Seymour Hirsch? So it's like, you know, it's like, con to start, you know, call him conspiracy theories. Um, uh, he's, he's a little much. Well, and, re and remember, everyone, most conspiracy theories come from governments. Okay? Exactly. Not that's, that's right, yes. Um, and then he says, uh, pointed out, stressing that the accusation the United States was involved in the acts of sabotage are false. Competent authorities are, again, they're very competent. I, 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 what I like is competence. Competent authorities in Denmark, Germany, and Sweden are investigating those incidents in a comprehensive, transparent, and impartial manner. It's so transparent. No, they're yeah. No, they're not. It, they're it, not I, Sweden it will not release its findings. It's it's a bit out of transparency, but that's why it's not releasing its findings. And um, what's also interesting is who didn't brief the UN Security Council at that meeting? Sweden, Denmark, and Germany. You know, you thought, hey, this might be an opportunity. You know, the only people who briefed that meeting was um, uh, Ray McGovern. And um, Jeffrey Sachs. Strangely, Sweden, Germany, and Denmark didn't choose this opportunity to, to brief the meeting and tell us the progress of the um, investigations. <laughs> so, you know, comprehensive, transparent, and impartial manner, uh, pointing out the resources of the U uh, for the United Nations investigation should be reserved for cases when states are unwilling or unable to investigate genuinely. But why should one believe that it's impartial? Uh, we have two states, Germany and Denmark, who are members of NATO, therefore aligned with the United States. Sweden is an aspiring member, would be a member if it hadn't been for Erdogan. 
uh, again, closely aligned with the United States. How can you just say that's impartial? What, what, what's your basis of saying they're impartial? They obviously well, are impartial. I mean, well, it, 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 how many of these countries want to be held culpable financially for, for compensation for the destruction of a $25 billion project, okay? You know, they, they, there's yeah. In, in the American context, you can you can have a um, uh, a criminal case, or you can have a civil one. Russia's got an excellent civil one, that's for sure. Okay. Right. No, and, and, and before I forget, you know, uh, any negotiated end is someone's going to pick up the tab for that. For that, right. someone's got to pay for that, George. That's right. That's right. Um, and then um, uh, uh, it was, uh, the Russian Federation proposed draft resolution clearly implicates the United States, mischaracterizes the statements of United States officials, noting oh. yeah, <laughs> mischaracterized. So when mischaracterizing, when, yeah, that's right. We have it. We will record. end it. We will end it. How how is that mischaracterized? Right, mischaracterized. That's right. Yeah, we will end it. And then uh, Victoria Newland also said we will end it. And then said, what was it the other day? I think, you, you know, Senator, you'll be as happy as I am that uh, North Stream is just a pile of junk uh, at the bottom of the ocean. So uh, that's very nice. Um, is that, I'm sure, would, how do you, would you mischaracterize that? I don't know how you mischaracterize I mean, it. I don't know how I can It's on the record. I mean, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> um, so the French delegate said the explosions targeting Nord Stream pipeline were the result of a deliberate act uh, investigations have been carried out, no reason to doubt them, uh, calling instead for them to be brought to a conclusion. However, there's every reason to doubt that the intervention of the Russian Federation, five months after the leak, five months, I mean, God, all right, I mean, this is ancient history. I mean, who cares about five months? I mean, Moscow is doing all it can to divert the international community attention as 24th of February, blah, blah. Um, I don't you know, think, I, I, I think I this argument before you. Why are you bringing it up now, five months after the event? You know, no, I'm sorry. I, I have the exact opposite. Finally, you want to talk about it after five months. <laughs> that's, that's right. Finally, finally, you deign to give the world this attention to it. You know, it's completely opposite. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, and then we have the Japanese guys saying, you know, they're all they're always reading uh, from the same script. Um, and then and then China actually supported the uh, the Russian initiative. And then uh, it says, welcome the draft resolution uh, and underscored the importance of authorizing an investigation into the sabotage of the Nord Stream, voicing concern about recent details related to the incident. Um, he said a simple statement of utterly false and complete fiction is not enough to answer the many concerns raised around the world. Yeah, I mean, just simply saying, oh, it's false and complete fiction. I just, that's, that's not good enough. As you say, well, if you didn't do it, who did? You know, can you provide us with any information? Um, and then he expressed his delegation's expectation that convincing explanations will be presented by relevant parties while also drawing attention to blah, blah. Um, so, uh, you know, again, that's uh, you know, the, not, not great um, confidence there in the uh, <laughs> Sweden, Denmark, and Germany. And then they, of course, the Sweden, Denmark, and Germany issued a joint letter in which they say, well, the investigation is uh, ongoing. Uh, we don't know at this stage when it'll come to a conclusion. Um, it's just... It's ongoing. We can't provide a timeline as to when when it will be concluded. Well, they're looking for root causes, right? <laughs> the root causes, yeah. So that's that. You know. So yeah, we're all waiting with bated breath, but could be a long wait. Uh, you know, it, it's really you know just to broaden it out. It just, it's isn't it so incredible, George, that something that is so detrimental and damaging to the European economy, and they're so they're so cowardice about it. Okay. Right. I mean that that that's what really shocks me. It doesn't right. shock me that the U.S. blew it up. No, I, I'm not shocked by that. But I'm shocked by the people that could have benefited from that. That's what I find really right. abhorrent, you know. Right. And 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 so when Burrell or the whatever French foreign minister is now, it, that these people are are so unimportant, you know. Right. When they talk about you know a just peace and and uh, sovereignty, uh, rules based order. You, 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 they have no legitimacy whatsoever. Zero. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, you, we can have differences of opinion, but can you, someone explain to me who blew up those pipelines? I mean, somebody, this is an international terrorist event. There are bandits out there and you don't want to find out what happened. Right. Right. Yeah. 
That's that's right. And if you keep in mind um, similar um, events, the um, these parties were never reticent about throwing around accusations. So um, you know, 9/11, boom! They said it was Bin Laden immediately. You know, said it was Bin Laden was behind this before they knew you know anything. Um, then of course, MH17. The, exactly. MH17. That's what I was going to say MH17, Russia. It was Russia uh, who was behind this. Um, uh, <laughs> the Skripals. Yeah, Russia uh, uh, killed the Skripals. Um, never, ne never presented that evidence. Um, so <clears throat> here, suddenly, well, we just gotta, gotta take it where it is. So this is this part of the world. You know, th you know, it's uh, constantly under, uh, in, you know, uh, surveillance. I mean, this is you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, satellites everywhere. You know, this is the Baltic. I mean, this is this is a major uh, uh, hub of uh, you know maritime trade activity. You you keep an eye on what the hell's going on, and uh, and the idea that well, after all this time, we just don't have a clue. Uh, you know, they they've ruled out that it's Russia. Um, then who? <laughs> but, but, so, well, we've just got to keep investigating. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's just an abdication of any kind of responsibility, okay? I really worry for the people of the European Union. These are the people you're ruling over you, okay? Right. This ridiculous double talk, even a five-year-old would question, okay? Right. Who did it then? Right. right. Yeah. And it's always motive. Who benefits everyone? And you know, I'm not I'm not you know Columbo, okay, but yeah. I love that series when I was growing up. And always what did he do? Who would benefit? That's where you go. Always, always. Because that that's it. I mean, that, that's the first question you ask uh, in any crime, you know, you know, who who benefits? And the chances are it's the person who benefits committed the crime. <laughs> you know, and in Colombo, yeah, the person presented an elaborate alibi. And then what you now have to do is break the alibi. But basically, just because you have this cast iron alibi, that doesn't mean you didn't do it. Uh, you just have well, to. You know, this, yeah. this is a test also for the, the new Republican majority. OK, the list gets longer and longer, George. OK, so why don't you have a, a special committee uh, investigation? There have been allegations yeah. from a serious, credible journalist uh, with, uh, in good standing for a half century. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, he's made these allegations. I think they're they should be looked into. Right. And you should start pulling in people from the State Department and the Pentagon and the White House and right. say, "Well, this has been claimed. I mean, do right. you refute it?" Right. Okay. I mean, right. I mean, uh, if they don't do it, George, then we know it's business as usual. Well, that's, a, that, that's, a, that's an excellent point. Exactly. That's what that's what they should do. And of course, yeah, they'll bring these U.S. officials will come before the House and and say, no, absolute lies, conspiracy theories. It's all propaganda peddled by the Kremlin. And and then of course, you know, that uh, raises the next question. All right. So who did do it? Uh, and then you know, if they try falling back on this, well, I, I, you know, we don't know. It's that these. And I like to remind, and I like to remind the witness, you're under oath. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that, I think I think that's a that, that's an excellent point. You know, this is an act of international terrorism. I mean, you know, don't we need to find out? You know, big, powerful, important piece of infrastructure has just been destroyed. I mean, isn't don't we have an incentive to find out who blew up? Uh, a well, piece see, of uh, infrastructure. Well, considering the direction of where everything is going, George, it would be better to cut your losses now, before. It, uh, uh, what is uh, uh, transboundary? Uh, that's a new word for me. Trans transboundary infrastructure starts blowing up all around the world. Okay, right. that's right. We'll never know why. Right. Okay, <laughs> this sets such a dangerous precedent. Right. Okay. Because right. now like, civilian infrastructure is on the table now. Okay, right. all right, we're all clear. We're all right. clear. Right, that's right, that's right, yeah. Well, so those are the two, two contrasting United Nations meetings that took place this week. Uh, very different um, approach. Long on moralizing, long on hysteria in one, and we're all gonna, you know, let's put aside conspiracy theories uh, for the timing, let's just, let everything, all the investigation take as long as they take. You know, you know, you just go right ahead, carry out your thorough, competent uh, investigation. So, yeah, so very um, uh, exercising contrast. 
these are adv very advanced societies. They have things like people like scientists, okay, <laughs> and mathematicians and stuff like that. Um, so we don't know where COVID came from and we don't know who blew up the... So what do you people actually do? What are you actually competent in? <laughs> what, are you, what is uh, are your competencies? That's, that's, that's a good is point. it railroads in America? Oh, sorry, not that one. Okay, that's a, that's an excellent point because um, you know the United States spends a lot of money on intelligence. I mean, that's not that's it's not just you know you know as happenstance um, that you have intelligence is at the heart of uh, you know this superpower. There's you know this this global hegemon. You know it has an awful lot of intelligence agencies that is the, the 17 that declared that Russia had hacked the uh, you know the, uh, the the US election the 17 intelligence agencies so none of the 17 is able to provide us with any clues as to uh, what happened but there's something I don't understand, George. There's a real huge contradiction here. So every grandmother over the age of 78 with a walker in 25 mile radius of the Capitol on January 6th, they found them. That's right. That's right. Was, first of all, all over the country, you know, like well, was it the walker? Was it the walker? Was it the walker in wheelchair that you know tick you know uh, alerted your attention? That's okay. Right. Yeah. You seem to be able to find these things. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. He's like, they were able to do it just by these cameras, you know, all, all the surveillance cameras and they, they did face recognition and everything else. And yeah, they located them everywhere in the country. But, you know, and how many, I think 2,000, I don't know how many people have now been uh, charged uh, for January the 6th. But this, uh, you know, pretty important event. A uh, vital piece of uh, infrastructure has been destroyed, and you just don't know anything. Know, you gotta, we gotta so, just... so, so when the planning was going on, according to Seymour Hirsch, so an entire military exercise, did it go into the Bermuda Triangle, or did your satellites take a break? Right. You, you have no idea what they were doing. No, no right. idea. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> all their GPS stuff and the pings and all... Nope, no clue, huh? No. Yeah. Well, yeah, you exactly. should all be fired and should have all of your budgets slashed right. to zero. Right. Okay. Right. Well, and think, go yeah. into gardening. Okay. You you right. won't be dangerous. That's right. No, I, I think that's a very good point, and I think that's the uh, what you just said is precisely the theme that uh, <laughs> the Republicans should um, uh, take up. So it, it's not enough to say, "Hey, not one penny." Uh, for Ukraine, that's fine, but that obviously that resolution isn't going to go anywhere. But this, this I think is uh, something very legitimate. You, you now control all of the committees uh, in the House of Representatives, and you should indeed hold hearings about what the hell happened to the pipeline. And this act of international terrorism, months and months have uh, dragged on, and we don't know what happened. And I think that, that's very much a legitimate. And let's see how U.S. officials uh, squirm and try, the, try to wheedle their way out of that. And, and another reason why to do it, though the Biden administration vehemently denies it, I would tell Jim Jordan, for example, Jim Jordan, but just about the entire world knows the United States did it. Okay. Right. 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 No. He, exactly. And, should, he, yeah. Absolutely. They should call Seymour Hirsch and give him. You know, there is give him a platform. You know, he will speak there. Can't can't attack him. Now, of course, the Democrats will attack him. Um, but you know, that doesn't have any you know credibility. You know, just attacking him, and they'll, they'll make you know, of course, the usual personal attacks. And it's been debunked. <laughs> but then you can ask, um, who debunked it, uh, and when did that happen? Uh, but but. But this, you know, it, it's absolutely something that uh, you know they should have hold hearings on. Everybody, don't hold your breath. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is the gaggle with Peter and George. Um, uh, we're on local, so please go to thegaggle.locals.com. Don't forget to visit the store for once once in a while. And I know Friday this is the beginning of the drought. Okay. <laughs> This terrible, I, terrible. I started watching Homeland. I'm like the last person on the planet watching Homeland. It's over 10 years old, sure. but it's like seven seasons. So you could get through that before you get to the but next one. Exactly. Line. Yeah. Yeah. By by the time uh, Tuesday comes around, you'll probably be you know at the end of the uh, the last season. So Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Please join me. Come with criticisms, comments, suggestions. Everything is welcome. And on the way out the door. 
Think about little buddy. He's planning on holding major investigations, holding hearings about the tip jar situation. Where you know, you know what what's happened there? You know, it's another one of those unsolved mysteries. You know, where 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 did all the coins go? Um, so um, he doesn't care where Jimmy Hoffa is. He wants to know where the coins are. <laughs> where the coins are exactly. So. Um, you know, if you want to hold hearings, then uh, you know don't give any money. But I think we want to we want to you know minimize uh, the hearings. So please, you go have a few bob in your pocket, whip them out, dunk them in his tip jar. You know that'll delay delay the hearings for a while. Uh, we're very grateful for all of your help and friendship and support. The more you're able to donate, the more of these videos we can make. Uh, the more we can uh, invest in improved technology, and above all. Um, <laughs> What about, you know, it, it'll keep uh, Buddy happy. Remember, if you like the ga gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.